Hey everybody, welcome to the garden. I hope you're having a great day. Shout out to the lemon and lime lovers and everybody in between. It's time for a recap video. Okay guys, so this is going to be a little bit different than our standard recaps. We're going to be going pretty much just over Bitcoin. Um, I just want to talk about Bitcoin in this video for, I think, obvious reasons. We're starting to tap into 50,000, even trade it slightly above it. And I just want to talk about where we're at, where we're potentially going, what's most probable as of now, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So looking at Bitcoin on the monthly here, uh, as you can see, we've had a great month so far, though it's 17 days. OK, so we have a good chunk of the month left. So we don't want to get ahead of ourselves for being uber bullish this month. Anything can happen within these 17 days. But I do want to tell you to look towards the left here and see this open area here. We are in a bearish monthly fair value gap. OK, so this is a potential failure zone for Bitcoin. Now, I'm going to tell you my opinion in a second here uh, of whether I think this will fail or not. But I'm just saying, just highlighting it, this is a potential failure, failure zone of Bitcoin. And if we look at the monthly, we have tapped this zone before, last month's high. You see the wick here, tapped into it and then rejected off of it. And now we're coming back to retest it. Now it's very, very strong and powerful of Bitcoin to t come back within a month, essentially saying, "Hey, you're not, you're not kicking me out. Your your ceiling's not holding me down just yet. I'm going to try again." That is a very good move. And depending on how this monthly candle closes, it could imply extreme strength for the following month. Okay, so. What I mean by that is if we were to close above last month's high, so let's use this line right here. So that's 48,975. If this monthly candle was is able to close above last month's high, that will imply major, major impulsiveness into Bitcoin on the monthly time frame. OK, because if you look, look at last month's candle, OK, it closed as a doji, closed under that previous month's high. And if we conquer that and essentially say, you know what, we're getting away from this wick, from this doji and we're going forward or up in this case, a closure above last month's high will be a lot of implication for a lot of impulsiveness coming back into the market. In this case, bullish impulsiveness. OK, a lot of velocity. All right. Now. Will that happen? Well, we are 17 days away from the closing of this of this candle. So there's plenty of time to come back and trade under 48,975. But the key is, will we close above? Now, I will say there is some evidence that we will close above. OK, there is some evidence that we will. We have to go down to the weekly. So let's actually do that now. Let's go down to the weekly. And we're going to see why does this this price action here to me tell me that there's evidence for us to close above this high well let's first go back to the weekly candle here that was last month's high okay so we have to highlight this candle here as you can see this is the candle on the weekly that came to that bearish monthly fair value gap and rejected and pretty much made a bear a, a bearish like evening star if i'm saying the, the hopefully i'm saying the right the right candle uh, uh pattern but pretty much of that nature, a bearish candle. However, it failed to hold bearish. Now, here we go. Let's draw this zone. Let's change the color. Let's make it a, let's make it a blue. Okay. So from the highs of that weekly candle, which is the high of last month, 48,975 to the lows of that weekly candle, which is 41,482. Okay. What have we seen after that weekly close? And it's very, very telling. Well, we've traded under the low of this weekly candle twice on the weekly time frame. We had it the following week and the week after. But all candles corresponding this week have closed within the zone and have actually rounded up. And then we had an expansive week still within the zone, mind you. It was still within the zone. We had an expansive candle last week. And now we're potentially getting a continuation candle of this expansive candle, breaking the highs of this. Now, why is that super important? Why is this very, very important? Well, all of the price action within the zone here, okay, even the big candle here, this one here, 
what it does, it does not lead towards uh, overextension as of now because it is still within this zone, still within this candle. The first steps of overextension is breaking from the rest period, which is all of this price action here. Okay, big move up, rest, and then the breaking of the high of that consolidation, which is that weekly candle last month's high, is when the potential expansive phase can start again. Okay, so same thing here, consolidation, and then expansion up once this high here got taken out. This candle led to the expansion here, and this led to the rest. This candle, theoretically, this week's candle, may lead to the expansion and then future rest. However, where are we expanding from? That's the key point. Well, we're at 50,000. Where's the high at? Where's the all-time high at? Well, we're right here, okay? We're right here. And what are the odds of an expansion stopping at an all-time high after this structure it is extremely low, extremely low, okay? And when I say extremely low, I can't put it, it's extremely low that the probabilities will lead for us to expand from this on the weekly, conquering the monthly bearish fair value gap, which is the last you know, imbalance on the monthly before the all-time high, okay? For us to then stop at this weekly order block or the weekly all time or the all time high. It is very unlikely in this scenario, this would imply major continuation and going back into price discovery. Okay. And because this is the weekly time frame, that would potentially mean between now and March, we could see this taking place. So pretty much Q1, we might see Bitcoin either Ta tackling its all-time highs or trading beyond it all right and don't worry we're gonna get if you're bearish we will get into a bearish ideas as well i'm just going with what's the most probable path right now now the weekly to me is showing major signs of continuation of expansion now just like the monthly candle this weekly candle super young it's only it's got six days left so there's still plenty of time for this weekly candle to come back into the zone okay but if it doesn't if we come back six days later and we find sunday night that this candle's trading above this this high here last week uh la last month's high which is forty eight thousand nine hundred seventy five, which is the high of this zone if it closes above that even like this that implies it, it implies major velocity of money coming into the markets okay coming into bitcoin major major velocity so this is very very important to keep your eye on definitely come back within the week and see where we're trading on this weekly candle now what should we look at next well let's go back to the daily time frame here okay because now we're going to get we're going to see if we can get even more evidence of signs of of this playing out where we do get potential upside within pretty much this month to April. So like, let's say this month to the beginning of April, end of March. Okay. So let's actually clean this up. So it's very, very clear. So we have the monthly red zone, which is that bearish fair value gap on the monthly. We have the zone here where if we conquer this on the weekly and close above it, it implies major upside. Let's go to the daily. What does the daily say? All right. So the daily here, very interesting we pull back right so this is that weekly that weekly high and last month's high so that weekly high here of the of the zone we pull back and then we pop back up after taking this low here okay and we've had a very very sizable run on the daily for bitcoin okay consecutive counts going up so you we are looking at an extension here on the daily specifically because for the daily the consolidation is not the weekly here Okay, this weekly zone. This was a consolidation for the daily. Okay, you had a big move down, grind lower, pop up, bullish consolidation, and then expansion. Okay, so this has pretty much expanded. I would say this is pretty overextended on the daily. But why is that not bearish? Well, look where we expanded to. 
Well, we got above the zone here, this blue zone here. Remember, the weekly zone. We're trading above last month's high, which is that wick here, okay? If this is overexpanded, which I believe it has, we're likely going to get a rest period. But what do we see most commonly when you have a big move up, guys? What do you what do you see? If you've been in my rooms on the Discord, if you haven't been in my Discord, please be there. It's free, and I do live sessions whenever I can, and hopefully they're of value. But oftentimes, I will share a lot of things that just work, at least in my opinion. They've worked for over a decade for me, and they are everywhere in the charts when you have a major move like this what tends to happen is a bullish a bullish consolidation and now that can come in many different forms okay that can come in many different forms but let's go over a couple the most common is what you'll see is a big move up and then a grind lower like this which obviously most people will say oh a bull flag right a bull flag of some sort yes and if we get that here, how will that look? So let's pull up and then grind lower. So trading near the highs of the zone, coming back into the zone, and then leading towards con continuation. Normally you would say, well, why is that so special? Well, let's go back to the monthly time frame. How many days are left in the monthly time frame? 17 days. Why is that important? It gives the daily time frame ample, ample time. Gives them ample time to create a structure, to create a structure, a small, a small fair, uh, a bullish flag. It can create a small pullback to come and mitigate the imbalances here very easily. That will then lead towards continuation. So the monthly having all that time for the daily time frame specifically is actually a good thing. It's a negative technically for the weekly because you want the weekly to, if you're bullish, you want to close above this high and decisively stay above. And the most decisive way for the weekly to stay above is if the monthly closes above the high here, right? But that's 17 days away. For the daily, that's overexpanded, okay? It, it, there's an expansion phase that's already happened. It having all that time to then go into a rest period and because the probabilities are going to be on the side of a bullish consolidation, a bullish rest period, that means that there's plenty of time for this daily time frame to build something that then leads to continuation very, very easily. A bull flag, a, 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 a trending cup and handle structure, it, there's a ton, a ton of structures here that the price action can build to can make here that will lead to continuation. Obviously there's always the chance of the two most extreme things where price just goes up or price just goes down. Okay. That's always a possibility, but the probabilities that's what's most likely to happen is after this expansion, because you have consecutive candles in the same direction, an ample amount of them that we get consolidation. And if we start consolidating, especially above last week's high or the, that that uh, that last month's high excuse me last month's high above the weekly zone here that will then really really imply major bullishness over the the rest of the month and maybe going even into march okay so this is this is a really really important aspect of watching the flow in the chart okay we have the monthly. We're going, to, we're going to do a real quick summary before I talk about bearish possibilities. Monthly is potentially going to close above last month's high, and if it does that, the conquering of this weekly, uh, this monthly bearish fair value gap is very high. The weekly, the weekly is also just getting out of expansion, leaving that level, leaving that high of last month. Okay. And the daily has ample time within the week, within this week, and within the monthly candle. We have six days to create a, a small rest, a small pullback, or we have 17 days to create something much larger and then break out back again to have the monthly candle close above this high. So the daily has ample time to try and keep the momentum up. The weekly has, has, has everything in its, you know, everything on its side to lead towards continuation because it's just breaking out and the monthly the monthly 
has the best opportunity to conquer its doji and then conquer this red zone since it's come and tested it last month. Okay, so this is a really, really big moment for Bitcoin. Now, what if we fail here? What will that mean? Is that the end of it all, right? Is this a bear market rally? Will the bear market continue, etc.? Well, let's go back to the monthly, okay? And let's get an idea of what we can be looking at if it fails. Now, let's just get the let's get the most extreme scenario out the way. Yes, we could fail here and then boom, it just drops, takes the lows, and we're coming 15, 10, etc. Obviously, anything anything's impo- anything's possible in the charts. Anyone who says otherwise doesn't know what the hell they're talking about. Anything is possible, okay? So we want to talk about what's most probable. Now, the most probable idea that I see, okay, in a bearish uh, structure or a bearish uh, environment for Bitcoin, a bear market rally, would be very similar, be rhyming very closely to what happened here in 2019, okay? So we have a big move up, a nice rally move just like over here, okay? After making our all-time high, just like over here. And then we have a intermediate lower high. And then we break down. Now, this had an extreme wick because of, you know, 2020, COVID and all. All right. We, we can't count on that happening again. I mean, obviously it can, but we can't count on that. So where would be the standard place that we would look for? Well, the monthly gives us a couple places. This consolidation right here. So that can lead towards a big pullback back down sub 30 going to 27, 28, and then if we go for the lows here, potentially even around 25. And then obviously we'll have to wait and see how price looks and see if that's gonna be enough for then creating a larger structure to try and challenge the highs again, or we might actually get something a lot more bearish, namely if let's just say the US equity markets start flipping bearish Um, and pretty much all the traditional markets start flipping bearish and dollar starts rallying like crazy, um, then we could then potentially see these lows getting taken out, which is the, you know, the 15,000s, and that would lead towards probably going into like the 10,000 zone, okay? That's definitely possible. That's not the probable path, okay? That's not the most probable as of now. The most probable is that on a bear scenario is that we'd pull back and come back towards 25,000 and then this zone here should lead towards major demand in Bitcoin and then we will likely see some sort of structure to lead towards upside. We'll have to wait and see how the price action looks because the price action could tell us if, when and if we get down there, uh, that's bearish, okay? We don't want to presume anything, but you know we we do we do have that potential possibility of where we'll get down there and then we start building out some bearish stuff. But as of right now, this would be the most likely path if this tends to be uh, find uh, tends to be the top here. Okay, the intermediate top for this rally is that we'll have a a sizable pullback, um, and then that will lead towards a higher low from from here, a higher low from here, uh, and then break up higher and, and and then conquer the high so j- it'll rhyme just like over here okay now is there evidence for this outside of the monthly on like let's say the weekly so let's go down to the weekly now the weekly there is some evidence of this okay there is some evidence of this and the evidence is if we look left we are in the monthly supply so the the, the imbalance the bearish fair value gap we also have this order block now you saw me say if you were paying attention, I don't think this order block will hold bearish, but the order block is there. So it must be respected. It is there. We also have a very small weekly fair value gap just under it. You know, that, you know, that doesn't, it's not very sizable, but it is there. So we have supply here that can act as a ceiling for the weekly, even if we expand out. Now, are the probabilities high that we fail there, that we fail there? No, it's very low that we fail there. It's very likely that we'll conquer that. But because it's there, we have to respect it. And if we do fail there, then we will probably pull back. And if the pullback is sizable and is coupled with a bearish reversal in the traditional markets, you will likely see a move all the way back to at least 27,000 to 26,000. So that rhymes with what the monthly is saying as well. And why 27, 26? We have the order block right down here, but we also have these pivots right here 
that will also try and hold as a floor for price. So that's going anywhere between 27 and probably as low as like 24, 22. Yeah, 22,000. So this zone would play as a major zone of demand in that scenario. Okay. And again, that would be to attempt to try and protect this low. This is a protected low right here at 15,500, give or take. All right. Now, the daily. Does the daily give us evidence that a bearish scenario is at play here? Let's see. So if we go down to the daily time frame, well, we do have some evidence. And the evidence is, guess what? The daily, like I said before, it, this is overexpanded. Okay. That's an overextension. Okay. It has consecutive candles in the same direction. It, out of out of this out of this consolidation again it's very key to understand that it's out of this consolidation you got this expansion okay that's why the weekly is not overextended yet so I just want I want to go over this real quick just to make it crystal clear this is not an overextension because the weekly is still in its consolidation until this week's candle okay we have to respect this candle right here. Okay, this candle right here, price traded within that zone until now. So we're not in overextension even with this big candle because that's still within the zone. If we get candles like this consecutively coming out of the zone, then we will start looking at overextension on the weekly. Okay, the daily is different because on the daily time frame, this is not a consolidation here. This is a consolidation here. On the daily, this is a pullback. Okay, that's a pullback. That's a failure off of this zone and it pulled back. It didn't consolidate down. That pulled back. It consolidated right here when it tried it when it made a, another lower low, popped up, and it consolidated right here. Okay. You had a nice little bull flag structure there. And then this is an overextension. So the evidence on the daily for a, a bearish play is essentially we are overextended. And there's again a possibility where we pull back into the zone. And depending on the price action that forms from that, we might get a bearish structure that leads towards continuation lower, okay? And you'll get sort of like a swing failure pattern here like that, okay? So there's definitely some evidence that we could see downside. But as I've said, the probabilities as of right now are leaning towards upside, okay? That's where the, that's where the probabilities are leaning. We have the fundamental aspect of the markets, the traditional markets breaking the highs and continuing to trend up. We also have the fundamentals of the Fed, at least signaling as of now, that they're likely going to cut this year. Whether it's, I highly doubt March, but whether it's March going into Q2 or Q3, we're probably going to see the Fed start cutting. And then obviously the technicals on Bitcoin with the monthly, the weekly and daily looking like they do, they are they are more likely going to lead towards upside. All right. So those are that's why I want to go over. I just want to really touch on Bitcoin as we're trading into fifty thousand here, um, and and just you know, kind of uh, you know talk about it because obviously a lot of things have changed. I don't do many. I know I don't do many recaps, but the reason why is because I do believe less is more. I'm sorry to those who really like the recaps. I know that you want them more often. I, I enjoy doing them, but I enjoy doing them when I'm sharing new information, when I'm sharing what I believe to be valuable uh, information. I don't want to do them just to do them, okay? Um, but this is a time where we have Bitcoin doing doing new things, where a new, new stuff is happening, and uh, sizable changes are happening in the markets here. Okay, sizable changes. So... You know, I will continue to do the recaps as that happens. And hopefully this video uh, was helpful to you. Again, if you disagree with me or you want to ask me questions or etc., leave a comment down below. I will always respond to comments if I can. Um, I'll answer questions best I can, of course. And I love to see the disagreement with me because I do want to hear your ideas. I take your ideas very seriously. I am always open to being convinced that I'm wrong. <clears throat> I want to make that very clear. So leave comments down below if you disagree or agree or you have questions. And if you want to get in contact with me or join the community, you'll find the link down below for the Discord. The Discord is totally free. Um, I do free live streams fairly regularly. Sometimes we go through time periods where we don't if there's really nothing happening. Um, if you are interested in my services, I do a day trade service where I trade the markets, Forex and crypto, every day, Monday through Friday. Um, and then uh, pretty much in the mornings until around 11 to 12 p.m. Eastern time. 
If you're interested in learning from me, I do a tutoring service. You can find the details of that in the Patreon link or on the Discord. And then obviously I have a swing trade service that's been running now for, I think we're going on almost three years. It's been I very successful so far. Uh, we do both stocks and crypto. Uh, the crypto side's been an absolute freaking firebrand. It's been a killer. Uh, so if you're really interested in that, you can definitely check out the information down in the Discord or the Patreon link, and you'll have all your questions answered there. Okay, guys, thanks for hanging out with me these years. It's been years. Uh, thanks for watching the videos. And uh, I really look forward to experiencing this year with you guys uh, and hopefully many more to come. And I always want you guys to remember, be patient, be vigilant, and be nimble. I love you guys. Take care. Bye.